Okay, so since I touched up my cabinets during my spring clean with me and I'm just on a roll of taking care of my house, I just I just have to. So I hope that you all are enjoying these type of videos. So as you're looking here, I have these two curtains, these two valances that I don't even know how long ago I made these 10, 12, 15 years. I kid you not, I do not get rid of stuff very often. I've always liked them. I actually took them from a set of burlap curtains and I just wanted them to be valances. It's just easy because we pop these open all the time. These blinds open all the time to look at our backyard and look at the birds. So I wanted to change them out, but I never really found anything that I actually wanted to change them out material wise. But I was kind of thinking that I was going to do drop cloth, but I wasn't really sure how that would go with my cupboards, if I wanted to bleach the drop cloth. And then, remember Kathy from Kathy's Estate? I still am popping over seeing some of the stuff. And she thought that maybe she had some of the black ticking fabric in her mom's stash who also quilted. I did not find any of that, but I did find some other fabric. So I am super excited to share with you what curtains, what little valances, quick and easy valances by the way because these were not even sewed they were done with hemma tape so super easy to make some valances some curtains for your house Okay, so this is the fabric. It's gonna be really hard to show you it, it, it. Um, but it is like old grain sacks um, put together. Um, I like that it had the old labels. It definitely goes with my primitive antique decor. There is some stainage on it. Um, like I said, this is kind of hard. Maybe I should have had one of my kids <laughs> help me hold it up. But yeah, so I like that it has, I don't necessarily want to focus in on this type of detail, but it's, so if I would have taken drop cloth and bleached it, this is probably the color that I was looking for because I think that it goes with my cabinets, it goes with my decor because I kind of have that, you know, old rusty crusty wooden thing going on. So yeah, I definitely love this. I love this. So yeah, she said, I saw this. I thought right of you um, because of the drop cloth. So what we're going to do is I'm going to see, I'm gonna take down my curtains and my little valances that I made. They're just on um, tension rods. I'll reuse the tension rods because they're already there and they fit the windows. I never really wanted to bump any kind of a curtain out since they are windows that we open and close all the time to look out our backyard. It's just easier just to have valances on them for us. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and take these down so I can match up my measurements of what the valances were. And I'm going to share with you how to make these quick and easily. Like I said, you can do this with any fabric. Um, or you can do it with drop cloth or you can do it with bleach drop cloth. It's just, it's, and it is as simple as this peel and stick fabric fuse is what it's called. Now, I washed these and I'll tell you how good this stuff is. My children both played sports and coming from rural America, smaller school, I had to glue numbers on their sports uniforms all the time. And how do you do that when they are vinyl on top of vinyl? Yeah, this stuff, this stuff works, let me tell you. If I can glue adhere vinyl onto vinyl onto fabric and be washed because you know, after every game you always had to wash their uniforms, this stuff is wonderful. So it'll definitely keep valances and curtains together. Now it's funny as I see the back of them, I never even realized 
that it never bleached out the front part of them. It only ombre did the back of them that it bleached out. I mean, this was some nice, yeah, it always stayed this dark and I really have 10, somewhere between 10 and 15 years these have been up. So it, I probably, my house would probably even a little bit more on the primitive color size when I still had these up. So yeah, so as you see, it was really, it was just that hem tape. I did not sew them. I am not fooling you by any means, you all. So yeah, so I'd love to share with you how to make a simple balance, simple curtains for your home. And yes, I have a cat coming at my feet because I'm in the kitchen and Rascal thinks every time that I'm in the kitchen that he needs to be fed. Now, the, now our twins are about 14 years old. So, yep, very at the very needy age. So I already have my fabric washed, but I have a cutting mat, I have fabric scissors, I have that fabric fuse, I have a fabric tape measure if I need it, I have some uh, another guide ruler now and then to iron it as I'm going along to make nice creases. I actually thrifted one of these college dorm extra ironing boards, which is a great thing because I don't have to bring up my heavy iron, and then an iron. So yeah, so this will be fun, simple and easy, I hope. I hope. <laughs> I always say that when I start a project. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to lay the fabric out, and then I'm going to put my other, other valance on. That way I already have my measurements of what I want. And now they can't, on these windows and the way that the tension rods are, I can't go all the way out to the edges um, so that it will fit and be nice and tight. So there'll be a little bit of gap. So all I need to do is place this on the fabric, give myself a inch or so, so I have something to fold over to make a seam. And yeah, so that's all I need to, that's all, that's all I need to do. So let's get started. So there is a little bit of staining here and there. So I want to try to avoid, I want to try to avoid it, but I don't know if it's going to be completely possible and if my OCD <laughs> is going to allow, it's okay. I, ha I have to say that, but I do like, I like the seam. I like how it's been put together. Um, so yeah, I want, I want some of this on my curtains. So these are a little bit more faded. You can't really see that, but that I don't, I, I'll see how it goes. So I know that this is definitely going to be um, one of my focal points, maybe for the bigger, bigger one, because this is the clearest and it has this all the way down there. So I might, I don't know, it's so hard to decide because I really like the whole, the whole image, but we, let's, let's, Let's see. see. On the other side, there's this one. I know that it's blue and it's not, you know, the ginger chick black and white, but I love the age of, I love the age of it and the thought of reusing something that's been stained up, getting piece and parts of it out. Because I have actually thrifted grain sacks like this and they just sit in a drawer and I don't do anything to them. So this is a great idea to make some fun curtains or little balances for my kitchen so I just now have to decide <laughs> how I want to cut them out so so you think it wouldn't be this difficult so but once you make that cut it's a pretty big decision so I think oh, I think that you just have to go for it <laughs> you just have to go for it sometimes so I know that I want some of the seam I want that seam to be in here. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to make, uh, you just gotta do it. So here we go, guys. Cause you know what happens is we can overthink, we can overthink way too much. Made it that far, <laughs> made it that far. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. 
So I know what I have for this one. And then now we'll get this one an idea. An idea. It's like, do I <laughs> see if I just try to keep just this? Um, which I like just this in there, but I don't think necessarily it's, it does have a little bit of a finished edge here that I wouldn't have to worry about. I could iron that down. Um, yeah, making the decision. Oh, the decisions. But if I folded this over, then you would see that through it. Um, so might as well just go for what this is. Decisions. This is a little bit faded over here. So, ah, okay, I'm going for it. Maybe we can make a rag wreath out of what's left over so we reuse. So we re reuse. So I'm thinking, I don't know, is this something that they sold? I saw in a clay primitives on um, one of her posts on Facebook that I saw somebody use this as a type of this as a sheet for one of their backdrops to their booths. So I, it must be a thing. I'm just really guesstimating on all this cutting. <laughs> There's no science to it right now. Okay, that's my discarded piece. We're going to Go ahead and cut some of that off because I know I got too much and can't really see the salty old dog or whatever it's called. You can't see that through there anyway. Okay, there we go. I'm going to get my iron warmed up. Okay, so now I'm going to change the angle here. I'm going to reverse this. I'm going to reverse it. It's going to be, uh, that seems not even completely straight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my creases so I know where I need to put. So let's go ahead and make our creases first here. So now I got a guide of where I want my crease to be. Have the crease where I need it to be. I only need about a inch to fold over. So I didn't worry about my rough cut I was doing, which was very rough. I'm gonna make sure that that stay in somewhat. So I only need that to be because this is about half inch, so I might go out an inch and a half. You see, then we can fold this over and then fold that over, and then we can put the tape. But let's get this sized. Cut first. Tested out talking a little bit more why I'm doing the video, so I hope that you guys are enjoying that. Um, sometimes it is hard to do voiceovers all the time and trying to explain step by step, but now I've got all my two sides done. I've measured them off, they are cut even, and now I can get my ironing board because I want to make nice little creases for my size to make sure that they stay in place before putting the fuse tape on. What I did, I did a half inch fold over and then I folded that over a half inch to make sure that I have a nice package that there won't be any fraying or any raw edges. Now we can get to using the fuse tape. Now if you rolled it all out like this, 
Um, I don't really suggest it unless you're very ta more talented than I because it is really sticky. So I'm going to cut it off in more workable sections and then I'm going to follow it down right where that little crease is that I did with the iron. That's where the iron comes in handy. You can see your straight line. So I'm just going to do a little piece by little piece, get it all attached before removing the backing because both sides is a double stick tape. So it will be very it will be very sticky, but you do have a little bit of workability. Don't worry about it because um, once you put it on, if it doesn't go right where you want, like I'm doing here, I can move lift it up and move it. It's when you iron it and fuse it all together it, when it's permanent. So you do have a little bit of workability if you get it stuck to where you don't want it to be. I'm going to go ahead and remove that backing rub it on a little bit it doesn't take much to get the backing it's really it's so easy to use so i'm just going to remove all the backing and then start folding over my folds onto my tape If I'm positive I have it where I want it, I will take my hot iron and permanently fuse it. So far the hardest decision with the print on there is making the cut. So same thing here, I'm trying to eyeball what I want it to be. I know that when I, it comes to the top of this piece, I'm going to have to fold it over to be able to put the curtain rod in there. So yep, so after doing both sides, now I just have to make that decision on the top of where I want the fold to be to end up after it's all put together. I'm doing that same seam on the top, just a little seam to have a nice finished edge, just like I did before. I'm gonna go ahead and iron it. And now I'm gonna get my curtain rod and that's what I'm going to be folding over. I didn't do the bottom yet. I wanna make sure it's going to hang and how much I can cut off, kind of eyeballing it. I wanted to get that top done first. <laughs> just to make sure that everything was good to go and so now i'm going to go ahead and apply that tape just like i did before double checking that everything is straight on the straight and narrow trying to keep it pretty straight and so yep just gonna long go along that line put that fuse tape on the top of that I'm double checking that I'm straight. I want to be positive before ironing and, and fusing it together. It's a little bit of that perfectly imperfect, but that's what I love about it. I finally just made the decision. I kind of held it up to the window and I'm just going to cut off that bottom writing match up what the valance was before. So I'm going to finish it off just the same way, but uh, for, for something that you can't just go and buy like a new piece of fabric, it's really the hardest decision was where to cut this fabric. Okay, so we sewed some curtains. I absolutely love them. They let a lot more light into our house. Nice to have a little bit of change up from the dark burlap, which I did love for a long time. So yes, with on my thrift with me, I did stop into Dollar General and I showed you that I was eyeballing these pillows for $8, $8, awesome. Um, so just like this bag that flaps over, that's the type of pillowcase I would like to make for you all. 
Now the thing I liked about this is I can tell that this is not going to just turn into a flat piece of fabric by the time you use it. So a lot of the pillow forms I find, that's what they do after time. So, and I have better luck making my own throw pillows or my own pillowcases, decorative pillowcases, because then when I wash them, they wash up a little bit better. I bought the ones from Hobby Lobby before and did things on there, but they pilled, they piled, what is that? You know, where they get the little, and then I, I, yeah, they just, they didn't stay nice. So I, I feel like these are going to be nice. And yes, even though it's a standard pillow, this is what I want to use on our couch. It's our house. We can use what we want. Who says we have to have a square hood all the time? So, yep, in one of my thrift hauls, I shared with you that I found some ticking fabric. I'm very excited about that. It's just a classic. Goes with the decor. I've had some ticking pillows that were on our bed. I brought them out to our couch. I love it. I've had those forever that I made. And actually I had taken the stuffing out of other um, throw pillows that I had thrifted and made those. So yeah, you can do whatever you want. Remember, it's your house. So I'm gonna show you how to make a standard pillowcase using the envelope type of style so that it just doesn't fall out. And it doesn't really necessarily look like you have a bed pillow on your couch, but you can if you want. So the one thing, so the one thing I really am hoping that there's enough fabric for both of these, but I did actually match it up with the material that's on our couch, um, throw pillows that I actually purchased from Hobby Lobby. So I know if I don't have enough that I can go and purchase a, a, a little bit more because I think I need about a yard for each pillow. So thumbs up, prayers, like I said, prayer, more of a prayer <laughs> that I have enough especially at the $4.99 price tag. So I don't remember what I bought the ticking for back in the day. So yeah, let's get started on this project. Oh, on this project, I'm not gonna be using hem tape. Um, I per worked out perfectly to sh share with you on the curtains this one. I am going to be using my sewing machine. The most I do on a sewing machine is a straight stitch. So the hem tape was nice. I used a little more than one roll, which was, what was it, 350 for the roll. So yeah, you could have sewed them, but it's nice to show somebody another option if they don't have a sewing machine. So on this one, I am going to show you with a sewing machine, just because I know how my family is with items in our house. They use and abuse them. And yes, we need to make them sturdy. Not that the hem tape, if it lasted on a sports uniform and if it lasted on a sports uniform during the activities of playing sports, then I know that it would be fine for these. But I do, sometimes you just like that decorative of seeing the thread. So yeah, so, so on this one, we're going to switch over to the sewing machine. So yes, it looks like I have two yards here. Yay! Awesome, two yards! So yes, I'm so excited. I do cut the tags off. I hate hearing those tags on. So yeah, okay. Ooh, so yep, that should be perfect. Ah. So the direction said about a yard and one inch. So I'm giving myself just a little bit extra. I think I have plenty. Not that I have that cool table that they cut, <laughs> cut it by the yard at the fabric store, but so I need a 48 inch piece. So I had to use my yard stick and my fabric tape, add 12 to that, and then it ends up being right in the middle of this. So I'm going to have to go ahead and cut that to length. I quickly realized upon my next cutting, my measurement was not going to equal out what the Pinterest site I was looking at. So I just ended up measuring to the seam of my pillows, adding an inch so I have that nice seam the he where you turn it over. And now I'm just, yep, I'm just going to wing it from here. Sometimes that's just what you have to do. I know that I needed one of my pieces longer so I could make the little flap over in the inside because we're going to be sewing this on the opposite, the inside. So then we reverse it. All your 
seams will be in the inside and where it folds in, the pocket will be in the inside also. Okay, so I followed a little bit of what the directions were on the Pinterest site, but then they were confusing me. I did keep the seven um, inch flap that I'm going to fold over, um, but I just gave myself a little bit extra of what the standard pillow that I picked, and maybe it's the pillow. I just, I, the directions were getting me kind of wonky, <laughs> so I, I just go with what I have made up since I'm self-taught on sewing. I probably throw all the traditional rhymes and reasons out, but okay. So now I need to go ahead and get my sewing machine out. I need to sew, finish this seam so they stay together first. And then I need to finish off these two seams so they have a nice edge on them. And then I can fold my flap over and then do this outer and then finish off this outer seam. So it really doesn't take too long. And I, after I got it all cut out, I probably should have pre-washed this, but this is nice fabric, I can tell. I don't think it's gonna shrink a little bit. And they're Dollar General pillows, so I think they're probably not a standard size anyway. So I, well, let's see, you know what, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll iron them though, but <laughs> yeah, it'll be fine. I, I, we will make it work. If they shrink a little bit when the first time they wash, I'll just remember not to dry them. So I told you all I can do is a straight stitch, no fancy sewing patterns for me. So on this one, I did fold over the edge. The bottom, I didn't need to just sew the two pieces together. Now this one, I ironed an edge on it. So I had a nice straight line to follow as I'm working it down to make a nice clean edge. side flap that doesn't have the enveloping I need to make sure that that's going in so when you reverse your pillowcase that you have um yeah you have your seams into inside need to sew this edge so I folded this all the way over this is the flap that it will be in so I'm making it even I don't know I have to double check if it needs to be even so then yeah so then I can sew these two now and then other than ironing it we will have a pillowcase
So I hope that you enjoyed today's video. Yes, I tried to do a little bit more relaxed, a little bit talking why I was doing it, not always doing voiceovers. Let me know down in the comments below what did you think and did I share with you something you didn't know about the views tape? Simple of making a pillowcase. You can I really find that just cutting the fabric to the size of your pillow. Oh, I, just, I know some people need to know the measurements, but it just not all pillows where you buy them are the same size. So I was happy to uh, just get an idea from a Pinterest site of what I needed to do and then just run with it. Nope. I've made like the square one throw pillows, the envelope ones before. And I think I've done that here on our channel a long time ago. And I wanted to do a little bit bigger pillow and use up that ticking stripe. And what an awesome surprise of getting that fabric from Kathy. Because I have been wanting to change out my balances. I just hadn't found anything that I was in love with. So if you're going to make something and put something up in your house, I really want to love it. So yeah, I mean, little decor because I keep thrifting is a whole other story of constantly changing. So give me a comment down below. What did you think of this type of video? I know that this, it seems like this spring I've kind of changed up our channel with being all the things that we want to get done around our house. I love thrifting and I love making over items for you, but I I need to share with you the things that we do on a daily basis to keep our house up, to keep our gardens up. Just So I hope you kind of, it's kind of like a vlog, I guess. Um, so let me know down in the comments below, what do you all think? So yes, again, thanks for watching today's video, guys. And as always, if you're part of our YouTube family, thank you so much. And if you're new and you're checking out our channel for the first time and you liked what you saw, please hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know when we've uploaded a new video. And we will see you next time, guys, and you can see what I'm up to. Bye!